Welcome to the Eastern Civ Podcast at the Historian's Eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes are released, click the bell icon. The Zhou Dynasty from 1046 to 256 BC was the longest lasting of China's dynasties. It followed the Shang Dynasty from about 1600 to 1046 BC, and it finished when the army of the state of Qin captured the city of Chenghao in 256 BC. The long history of the Zhou Dynasty is normally divided into two different periods, Western Zhou from 1046 to 771 BC and Eastern Zhou from 771 to 256 BC, so-called following the move of the capital eastward, were to be safer from invasion. The most influential minds in the, in the Chinese intellectual tradition flourished under the Zhou, particularly toward the last period of the Zhou dynasty, considered a time of intellectual and artistic awakening. Many of the ideas developed by figures like Lozi, Confucius, Mencius, and Mozi, who all lived during the Eastern Zhou period, would shape the character of Chinese civilization up to the present day. The Zhou people were not invaders. They were Chinese-speaking people descended from the Longshang Neolithic culture. During the course of several centuries, the Zhou moved away from the barbarian pressure, migrating toward the northwestern agricultural basin of North China, the Lower Wei Valley. Here they began to develop Zhang-style agriculture, and they also built a city in the plain of Zhou, which gave the name to the dynasty. The first important historical figure of the Zhou is King Wen, who is described as living a standard, benevolent he became king of Zhou in 1099 BC during the last days of the Shang dynasty. King Wen is credited with conceiving the ambitious plan of undermining the authority of the Shang by making alliances with neighboring chiefs that gave the Zhou the military power to make conquest possible. Wen's growing power disturbed the Shang court to the point that they imprisoned him. However, Wen supporters ransomed him by giving the Shang a large number of gifts. The second son of King Wen was King Wu, who built the new capital and named it Huangjing. In 1046 BC, Wu led an army of 50,000 troops against the Shang army of 700,000, the Battle of Muye. The Shang people were so unhappy under the rule of the Shang king that the Shang soldiers offered little resistance and many of them joined King Wu's side. The Shang king retreated to his palace and committed suicide. He locked himself up in the building and set it on fire. The Zhou justified the change of dynasty and their own authority by claiming that the dispossessed Shang had forfeited the mandate of heaven by their misrule. Wu returned to Huijing, where he died, still relatively young, and his son, King Qing, became the new Zhou ruler while he was still a child. The Zhou were not able to fully control the eastern plain the Shang had controlled. The Zhou dynasty was never a wholly unified realm. The Zhou court extended its power over the eastern plain by granting authority to members of the royal family, and in some cases to favored adherents, who established walled forts supported by garrison troops among the original inhabitants of the east. In some cases, local chiefs were accepted as Zhou supporters. Hence, there came into existence a network of city-states on the plain, from which military and political control spread over the surrounding farming villages. Any local leader who challenged the Zhou order was quickly punished by the army, and the regional delegates were closely watched. There are many resemblances between the Zhou system and some of the forms of feudalism in medieval Europe, which is why the Zhou age is sometimes referred to as the feudal age. Even though the Zhou system was indeed feudal, it had many differences from medieval Europe. The most important difference was the ruling class was mainly unified by kinship ties. After the barbarian invasion drove the Zhou rulers eastward, the state of Qin became responsible for guarding the western frontier, and they gradually moved eastward and eventually occupied the original Zhou domains. Thus the Qin became a close ally of the Zhou, and they also had marriage relations with the Zhou ruling class. The city-states slowly emerged as powerful independent fiefs, and the real Zhou power disintegrated. The states located on the peripheries grew into major territorial powers, and its rulers normally had greater military and economic strength than the king, who was now dependent on a small royal domain around Luoyang. By 700 BC, the state of Qin in the west, Jin in the north, Qi in the east, and Chu in the south were the main centers of power in China. The royal Zhou domain on the central Yellow River Plain 
was powerless in comparison to the perific realms. The period of 772 to 476 BC is known in Chinese history as the Spring and Autumn Period.